Hello everybody, Nigel here from Nigel's Modelling Bench and uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, I've got a kit review today. This is a brand new kit from Zvezda. Um, I believe it's only been out a couple of weeks and it really caught my eye. Uh, those who know me know I'm a bit of a petrol head. I've got a Mustang. I saw the word Mustang um, and sort of started, you know, the Russians have called a truck a Mustang. Wow, I've got to get that. And I looked around a bit on YouTube and um, I found a Russian site that actually showed this built, not painted, just built. And then they sort of took parts off it. And I am absolutely amazed. I have never seen such a detailed model truck. And when we get in the box, you'll see what I mean. What's amazing with this kit, as you can see, it's 135th scale. It's a, it's a three axle, six wheel Russian truck. Yeah, nothing unusual there. It's got a, um, flip over cab, it's got a spare wheel behind the cab, it's got a tarpaulin on the back. Nothing unusual, but wait until you see the detail. And also the price. This kit is less than £30 in the UK. Uh, certain people charge just over, but I've looked on um, scale mates and I can tell you that um, all of our usual, you know, plus mod and everything, European suppliers, it's less than £30. E-models, it's 31 50 Wheel spin models was 29 74 That's where I got mine from. And it came in a couple of days very well packaged as you can see the box is is immaculate um, I've got the box on an angle just because it's very very glossy and you can see you've got the glare off of the light so I don't want to do that so first of all we've got a lovely box art there which is basically showing the six wheel truck in the middle of the woods going down a dirt track um, <clears throat> so let's have a look around the box so the part number is 3697 and we can see here we've got the paint call outs for Zez Vesda paints and Tamiya which is nice Nice to see that we haven't actually got just um, MIG ammo or whatever. Um, <clears throat> and then we've got our decals here. And then we've got some information about Zvezda and everything. And you, you can email them and that. And then we've got some safety stuff. Not suitable for children under three years because of small parts. Talking about parts, we've got 474 of them. And it's a massive 22.7 centimetres long. So it's not going to be very large. But, um, you know, it's a 35th scale truck. So what do you expect? End of the box there. You know, nothing really unusual, just the same box art. And then going around here, we can see three other kits that, um, that Zvezda do. Zvezda have, uh, in my experience, come a long way. In the last couple of years, they really have jumped miles ahead. If you look at some of their older kits, in fact, I'll show you one now. Here you go. This is a um, Gaz AAA Soviet truck, three axles, so it's very similar. World War II, um, made in Russia, 2006. And we can see when we look in the box that it's fairly basic. Um, we can see we've got a very interesting, very strange finish on the plastic there. It's very, very grainy. Um, and as you can see, it's very sort of basic nothing much to write home about no open louvers or anything you know the seats pretty featureless but you know it's, it's a kit of, of of this vehicle if you want it it's got a tarpaulin in there which is but it's very sort of you know like old itinerary and that is what Zvezda was always like now this as I say this is 2006 if we look at this this is um 2019 we're only th talking 13 years later the difference is quite astonishing um, when we look on the back of the box, we can see here there's the model built up and um, big error I see here that they've made. They haven't got all the wheels on the ground. You can see up here that wheel's not on the ground and that is one way to ruin a truck model is to have one of the wheels up in the air. Not a good look. So uh, and you can see we've got the detail here of the, we've got seats in the actual cargo bay at the back and we've got engine detail, exhaust detail and everything. It's um, pretty amazing. Um, so it's saying here the truck belongs to the Mustang family of Russian military off-road vehicles. It's a 6x6 six six and can carry a payload of 6 tonnes. The truck is designed for the transport of military cargo and personnel, towing traders and artillery, as well as a base for various weapon systems. So we can pretty much guarantee that they'll be adding on to this and they'll have guns on the back of it or whatever. But um, So let's have a look at the box. I haven't looked inside this box, you can see it's still sealed. So I'm doing a cracking the box blind. <coughs> Sorry guys, I had to turn off there because the dog started barking and no, it's not the postman because the postman's just been and delivered this about 10 minutes ago. So here we go. So I cut the end of the box open. As you can see, it is an end opening box, which is a, a shame, but 
there is light at the end of the tunnel because we've got a normal top opening box inside so quite what they've done that I don't know but again extremely good packaging and we can see that this box is um, pretty crammed with plastic and there we go so first off we've got our bag of vinyl tires which look nice but unfortunately vinyl tires and then we've got one bag there with um, three sprues another bag here with three four sprues uh, health and safety leaflet by the look of it we've got some rope our clear parts again this is that's Vesda soft plastic so if we if, if you looked at my um, tow pole build if you do get one of these in fact I might do a test on this if you know if you know my two if you know of my tow pole build you will see that the Vallejo uh, liquid mask I used attacked the plastic the clear plastic and in hindsight, thinking about it, I think it may be the plastic that's at fault, not the Vallejo. So I'll do a test on this and see how it goes. Got a clear pull out there. So we've got uh, two different trucks in different colours. We've got three different trucks. There's two on there. There's two on here. And then there's two here. So there's four different options by the look of it. We'll have a look at that in a minute. But obviously they're all green. It's Russian, so they're all green. And then as usual, we've got the black wheels with the black chassis and everything. I did the wheels on my topo green they should have been black but um, I like to add a bit of colour so an instruction manual there which is typical A4 sized black and white printed paper and stapled down the back so let's have a look at these instructions and see what we think okay so as I say typical A4 instructions black and white printed on paper no gloss which is good um, so straight into it, we've got the image on the front here we've got some information there I'll zoom that in so you can uh, see that and read it if you want to and then we've got some other stuff on the instructions here you can read so we've got English there German Italian Spanish is that uh, and French by the look of it and then we've got down here we've got two different versions that you can build from the kit um, I'm assuming you could, if you wanted to tarpaulin with the cab up, you could have it, or if you wanted it with the cab down and no tarpaulin, you could. Um, I don't know what they're talking about there, but uh, best be careful when we're going through the instructions, we'll have a look. So, straight into the instructions, we've got our usual kind of sprue call outs, and as you can see, there are a lot of parts, and it looks as though we've got nothing unused on here. We've got two of those sprues as well, so lots of it lots and lots of complex little kit so we've got one two three four five six seven eight sprues tires and the um and our string so as i say you know when we consider prices of kits these days some of the new trumpeter stuff i'm not knocking trumpeter at all i love them but i was looking the other day and there's that new uh, missile launcher that's come out. I, don't, I can't remember what it's called now. It's got the really big fat missiles on it, two missiles on the top. It's based on a tracked chassis, which is going to be no bigger than like a, a, a T90 tank, even a bit, bit smaller than that, actually. And then you've got the framework and the raising mechanism and the two missiles. It was 89.99. You know, when you compare that to this for 27 quid, I, I couldn't believe it. And when you think, I'm only going back a couple of years ago, you know, when you get the, the, the full Patriot launch system with the radar, that was 89.99. So, you know, it's, um, it, the prices have gone absolutely crazy on Trumpeter, but Vesda seem to be uh, keeping their prices down. And also Hobby Boss seem to be a lot cheaper as well than, than Trumpeter, which is strange. But, you know, I digress. So here we are. So it's telling us um, to glue a detail in the specified place is going to be a solid line. To establish a detail on the specified place without glue is going to be the um, the, uh, the the open line there, just the framed line. And then we've got different assembling versions. There's going to be a question mark. So that's only three things to look out for. So it's nice and simple there. I wouldn't say this is a beginner's kit, but I would say if you've only got a couple of kits under your belt, give it a go because it's going to go together very, very nice. And the other thing, you know, I'm going to say it, I always do. I love Zvezda's plastic. I absolutely love it. The way, the, the way it cuts, the way it sands, it's just lovely. Really, really nice. Um, so, there we go. Engine going together there. We've got the main block halves going together with the transmission integral, sump, um, valley going on there, and then we've got the top of the transmission. Cylinder heads with rocker covers going on. Um, looks like that's going to be starter motor. 
and then we've got a this is going to be some bits and pieces that's going to be an air pump a vacuum pump probably and that's going to be some sort of reservoir I'm guessing and then we're adding all the ancillaries to the front of the engine pulley going on there belts oh that's the starter motor there so I don't know what that is um, trying to think what that would be it's probably just a part of the car maybe an oil filter or something not quite sure anyway moving on and we've got the gear stick here we've got the turbo going together let's just make sure I'm on camera there we go so we've got the turbo going together there so there's a nice detailed touch we've got a, that looks like going to be a water header tank um, noticing there aren't a lot of color call outs here it should be telling you to paint that white I'm guessing and then we've got the gear, uh, gear shift there and then we've got the intake manifold and everything going on here that's going on to the top of the engine then we've got some filters going on the side and then there's a big canister there and then there's the oil filler and everything there then we've got it all going over that was a twin turbo so we've got two turbos um, going on to the back on the got the intake there for the turbos um, that's going to be our pipes going off to intercooler then and then we've got a water header tank gear linkage wow this is incredible we've got a gear stick sitting on top of the engine there as it would be in real life when they lift the cab up the gear stick would stay where it is and then we've got two filters going on the back of here and then we've got the actual gear linkage going onto the top of the transmission I've never seen that on a kit before um, you know it's probably out there but I've never seen it and then we've got a winch assembly going together here and they're telling us to use the string on the pulley and there's the winch and everything going on and then that's going on to the back of the chassis there um, and then we're building our prop shafts up and it looks like here just checking again I'm not off camera and it does look like here we've actually got working prop shafts they snap together so they're going to look really good I think this is going to be a model you wouldn't want to over weather because it's going to be plastered in detail it's going to look you want it to all stand out you don't just want to plaster everything in grease grime and muck and everything um, then we're building up the front bumper with the light units going in which is a bit weird um, oh, okay so we're going to build up the chassis rail here and then we're adding the front bumper on and then this is a um, this is the, our, our um, what's that called reaction rod um, going in there which is going to stop the axles from twisting and then we've got another beam going in here there's another yeah. beam I'm hoping the dog's going to not bark there we go just barking at once yeah. then we've got a cross member here which has got a lot of detail yeah. on it right I hope she didn't start barking again so we've got a cross member here um, with a lot of detail on it there it's quite incredible the amount of detail in this thing and then we've got the that's the towing eye going into the rear cross member and then we've got some um, pickups there for air and then not sure what that is it's going to be something else for air I should imagine and then we've got the I don't know is that going to be the pulleys for the winch there I'm guessing probably just going to be pulleys for the winch radiator going together with the shroud and then we're adding all that onto the chassis and then we've got our little rear bumperettes there and then we've got the rear towing eye so yeah that's coming through that's going to be the pulleys for the winch this circular part here that I was talking about then we've got some steering linkage is that I'm guessing it's either steering linkage or a hose of some sort it looks like it's probably a hose of some sort then we're going over the page remember we're still working on the engine and the chassis we're going to add the chassis to the uh, to the uh, engine and then we're going to add the radiator in there um, intercooler on the front so we've got radiator hoses on the radiator and then we've got these intercooler hoses here and then we've got this panel there going to sit on the top uh, more drive shafts looks like we've got a transfer case there um, then this is part of our intercooler hosing by the look of it yes that's more turbo hoses there by the look of it and then we've got the air filter box and then we're into our springs we're adding all the air filter box and everything in here more springs um, more intake ducting or exhaust ducting is that wow this thing is incredible um, and then we've got that's that's going to be intake ducting isn't it I'm guessing no that's going to be exhaust ducting so these are actually the exhaust pipes here sorry um, it's very very busy this um, this instruction manual and then we're putting our axles together um, building up the differentials there um, so there's two of those axles and there's one of those diffs and then we've got our fuel tanks um, air storage tanks and probably battery box there and another fuel tank and then that's going to be a support that's probably what the cab's actually going to sit on um, 
more air tanks here and we're adding all lots of bits and pieces of greeblies to the chassis we've got our rear radius arms there so yeah as you can see extremely busy a lot going on and then we're on to our cargo bed so we're putting the these here looks like these are some sort of towing eyes or towing towing rods or something and then we've got um wheel chocks there we've got some tools there's an axe and there's a shovel going on the bottom and then there's the sub chassis for the um or subframe for the uh, cargo bed rear cross member there by the look of it with the rear lights going in and then we've got another storage box here the mud guards with kamaz written on them it'd be nice to see if we've actually got kamaz on there or if it's been a you know a a, a, a doxered versions to to avoid copyright um i don't remember if it's actually said kamaz on the box did it no so it may not have kamaz on there we'll see um and then we've got the these are the seats going together here and they're just going to sit down in the middle of the cargo bay there we've got some more seats going on the sides so obviously the seats are going to be optional whether you have them or not a couple of jerry cans uh rear bulkhead there and then we're into building up our wheels um, so we've got three piece wheel rims which look very nice they should look uh, pretty cool looks like that's going to be the special one for the spare because it's got the brackets on it oh that beam i said earlier back here that i thought positioned the cab it doesn't actually that's actually supported the spare wheel so that's i was wrong there not often i'm wrong eh? <laughs> only every video i make and then we're into the cab and this is the bit that really caught my eye and i think this will shock a lot of you that are into your military trucks so we've got the cab floor there and we've got a subframe going on the bottom of the cab here which is quite incredible then we've got like a rear bulkhead and a seat pan going on top of that there then we've got the driver's seat or is that like a that's like a bed by the look of it and then we've got the driver's seat here going together which is a multi-part affair and then you've got the subframe of the seat there where so if we're building version one, so if we're building with the cab down, we can fit the gear stick into the cab. Um, if you remember going back here, they showed us putting the gear stick onto the engine. Now what you could do here to make it accurate if you want to is cut away that flange and then you could probably have the cab folding up or down and the gear stick would stay on the engine. Uh, we'll have a look at that when we build it. Um, and then we're building another seat up here adding interior detail into the side walls of the cab which is a really nice touch if you look at a lot of um, model trucks like for instance the um, I'm not sure the number now but there's a trumpeter um, six wheel American truck and it's got all this detail on the chassis and it's all amazing but the, there's no interior detail in the cab you get the seats the floor the dash but the actual cab shell has no interior detail so when you actually drop the cab on and you look inside instead of having door panels with any handles or anything it's just a flat surface with nothing on it at all so nice to see they've got all the interior detail there um, and they've got the grab handles going in there then we're going to add all our hinge mechanism for the um, for the cab it looks like you have to choose which hinges you want so maybe unless you do a bit of jiggery poker a bit of work it looks like you, you have to choose to have the cab up or down um, adding the rear windows in there and then we've got our three seats going across the main cab and the rear part of the cab going on then we're into our steering wheel um, and then we've got this is what i'm talking about with the detail we've got our interior lights going into the roof here and then we've got the overhead um, area there which has got their glove box and everything in and then we've got sun visors yeah we've got sun visors there there's three of them um, we've got our windscreen here and it's telling us here to remove for assembling version 2 so if you're doing it with the cab up then you've got to cut those off this is the inside of that front face there so this is this is actually going to glue onto the back of that panel and when you lift the cab when you look inside the cab if you were if it's on a full-size vehicle you would see all the heater ducting and brakes fluid reservoirs and things like that in the cab that is what you get in the kit you're getting the full heat reduction that goes up underneath the uh, dashboard and everything you've got the headlights going in there the upper panel for that dash and then we've got our lights our windows going into the side windows there um, this is gonna be these are the front corners of the cab so we've got little side lights going in there interior door panels 
with handles and little cubby boxes down at the bottom. Then we've got our steps with our lights going on there. Obviously the whole cab is going together there. We've got the ends of the dashboard with the grab handles like the Land Rovers used to have to get in. Um, then we've got all the, the detail down here. So you've got the version 2 is going to have these, these stays extended. Version 1 is going to have them down. Now, I would imagine if you want to start getting your drills out and your brass rod and everything, you could make all this workable. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's possible. <clears throat> then we're on to the last page and we're going to build up the the roof um, access panel. I'm trying to think of the name. I can't think of the name. Hatch. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> the roof hatch. And then we've got the internal mud guard um, splash guards there for going around the engine bay. Um, this is going to build up. This is building up the the brake cylinder um, actuators, the air brake actuators, and these are going to be for the rear brakes. And then we've got. We should have similar for the front. I'm guessing. No, but look of it, we haven't. So um, you know, two piece wheels. Um, and then we've got this outer rim going on here. I'll have a look at the plastic and see what's going on there. And then we've got, um, that's going to be like some kind of air conditioner unit, I'm guessing. Um, and then we've got the tarpaulin there if we want to build it that way. Or we can have the, the actual hoops bunched up together at the front there and have no tarpaulin. Uh, and this one was inspected by number 18. Um, so we've got version 2 has got our cab sitting, sitting up. Version 1 has got it sitting flat, so in that case it's going to go on the back of the cab and in that case it sits on the back of the cab there. And, and that is that, it's basically put your wheels on and it's finished. So really, really busy, complicated, but I can imagine thoroughly enjoyable build. Um, it's not covered in loads and loads of tiny little pieces. I wouldn't consider it to be over-engineered. I just think it's got the right amount of detail and it's going to look absolutely stunning with a you know a lovely good coat of paint and everything it's going to look really really nice so let's have a look at some plastic okay so here we go We've got a bag here with three sprues in it and big old sprues i've just measured them 38 by 24 centimeters so lots and lots to see in here um, i have cut the end of the bags off so that you don't have to listen to all the crackling so on this first sprue here um, we can see let's just check you in shot yes you are uh, we can see we've got lots and lots of detail. So we've got our cab sides here, cab sides there and there. Here's our seats which look beautifully contoured. Um, we've got our roof, rear panel, this is going to be our front panel, dashboard, um, some greeblies here, tiny little grab handles moulded onto parts, tiny little hinges on here or supports, and then we've got all this little ducting and tubing and stuff. Look at that detail. I'll show you close up in a minute. We've got this cross member here, which is beautiful. And we've got this lovely pressed steel um, shown. We've got the cubby hole area here up above the uh, driver's head. And then we've got some parts here, which are very, very fragile, little steps or something. And then we've got lots and lots of little greeblies. There's a gear stick there, um, probably a seat base or something, or doors. And then uh, floor there with lovely, um, lovely surface on there. And again, it's got that sort of pressed steel look to it. Got this cross member here, which again has that lovely pressed steel look. It's um, I'm really impressed. It's really, really nice. The intercooler there with the grill on there, the, the ribbing. And then we go on the inside. So we look at the floor. Here's the inside of the floor. When we look at the outside of the floor, again, when it's, when it's up, we've got this beautiful detail in here. Yes, we've got some ejector pin marks to deal with. Um, the only one that's going to be really difficult to get into, I think, is that one there. Although you come in this way, but you'll get your uh, your floury skinny sticks. Well, here's one here. Get a floury skinny stick. You're going to get in there just like that and sand that out, no problem at all. Um, if you don't have any skinny sticks, I would recommend you get some. They are amazing. Um, I don't know how I ever did modelling without them. Um, and then we've got our interior door panels here. Got an ejector pin mark there, but that is behind the. The cubby hole which is like the map pocket ejector pin marks on the insides of the doors but they're going to be behind the interior panels and then we've got the interior panels here again we've got ejector pin marks but they're going to be hidden because we've got interior panels here going over that so that's the interior panel there with all your detail which is actually going to glue 
into there so there you go then we've got the roof here with the interior detail so you've got rivet detail in here or popper detail holding the headline in whatever a um, couple of ejector pin marks to get rid of or just those two because those two will be hidden and then we've got the actual positions there for the uh, interior lights so as I say you know other than seat belts this thing's got the lot um, if it had seat belts on it I'm assuming it did so there we go really really nice to give you some close-up looks at all this stuff you'll see what I mean when we talk about the the molding it's absolutely beautiful now if these are black plastic um, as some a lot of this probably will be I would recommend thoroughly buying this Revell tar black 36106 yeah thin this with the Revell thinner spray it with an airbrush leave it for 24 hours to dry it's so leaving down so it takes a while to dry but it just it looks so much like black plastic you know black plastic when it comes out of the mold like you see on all your trucks the mud flaps and everything and the mud guards it just looks exactly like it so if you're into your cars and bikes and stuff that paint i find is the best looking plastic representative paint there is so uh there we go i'm waffling dashboard there upside down the interior front panel there and then i say this is the interior side panels exterior side panels we've got some bits and pieces there's a light units there there's a fire extinguisher or something <laughs> looks like a fire extinguisher. it's absolutely covered in greeblies look at that cross member you know that is beautiful you'd think that was pressed steel wouldn't you it's beautiful uh, another one there then we've got as i say the cubby hole here with the um, glove boxes in there for the uh, overhead for the driver some very very fragile little parts there really really nice lovely seat detail again roof detail there and as i say we've got the interior roof detail there as well and then we've got the rear panel again another cross member here's the heater ducting that goes up under the dash got our gear shifter there and basically a lot of this is just the same as the uh for the other side and there's an interesting as well if we look at those mud guards there they go on the back of the behind the front wheels interior detail is also in there so well done Zvezda it's about time somebody started making kits like this it's incredible and it had to be Zvezda that did it and did it for this amazing price as well it's incredible so here we go another sprue same again same size whatever I said it was I can't remember now um 30 by 24 was it so we've got a chassis rails here which look absolutely stunning we'll have a look in a minute one of the biggest downsides to truck kits i always find is when you turn the chassis over it and it's plastered with ejector pin marks so we'll save that one um got some sort of panel there as a cross member all sorts of bits and pieces for the engine some ducting by the look of it exhaust canister is that and we've got some more air canisters we've got the end of the prop shaft there some little tiny parts here prop shafts again all the springs nice to see they haven't got any oh, there is a slight amount of sinkage in them which is often the case with uh, leaf springs you normally get some sinkage in the middle um, really really nice lovely fuel tank detail on there again lovely detail on these springs again chassis rail there so let's have a look when we turn over and yeah they're absolutely plastered and ejector pin marks there we go but it's just the same as every other kit uh, at least not like massive great things sticking out and they are kind of away from detail you know as i say these little skinny sticks you're going to get in there they're absolutely made for it getting in there it's perfect width and to be honest i'm looking now yeah tiny little drop of super glue in there be careful how much you put in super glue mixed with talcum powder will do the trick um or you could just use some um mr surfacer i wouldn't recommend using the uh, sprue glue in there because if you get it onto any of the other areas where the detail is you're going to destroy the detail so yeah that one there is a bit tricky to get to um because of its location but some of them may be hidden by cross members we don't know that but uh yeah it's, it's, a, it's always a bugbear with truck kits is it's bloody ejector pin marks on the inside of the chassis again on the springs there we can see we've got some sinkage these springs are made in halves so that's why they haven't got any sinkage in them but when the when springs are made solid like that, they generally have shrinkage um so yeah not much to see on the back of there really what is nice to see we've got the i'm guessing that's the front and that's the back of the cargo bay uh there's no ejector pin marks on there at all so that's very nice to see tiny bit of shrinkage in there but not going to worry about that and there's the front bumper there looking lovely so let's show you these chassis chassis rails detail them is astounding 
really really nice I think you'll agree shame it's all going to be painted black <laughs> and then on the inside you can see we got these uh, these ejector pin marks but nothing much to worry about okay so final sprue for the first bag and this is dealing with the cargo bed and the tarpaulin so as, you, as I said, we, we could imagine there's going to be more versions of this coming out where you're going to have something else on the back. Maybe there'll be a tanker version or something. So here we've got these. They look like towing, towing lights for towing stuff. They'd be handy for your aircraft dioramas, I'm guessing. If you do 32nd scale aircraft, I mean 35th scale, it's a towing eye. It's going to be close enough, surely. Um, so there's the subframe there for the, uh, for the cargo bay. Here's the side walls. Again, we'll have a look at the back and see what they look like with ejector pin marks. And then we've got the sides of our tarpaulin. There's a piece of loose sprue there. That's a bit weird. It looks like the sprue's been cut. Or that they've, they've actually put a wedge into the um, mould to make the plastic flow in a certain way. So, yeah, very unusual. Um, so, yeah, the sprue ends there and there. It almost looks like it's... That's kind of a short shot there. If you look at the end of that, we can see that it's um, it kind of looks like a short shot, but the actual part is okay. So it looks like their engineers have done some work and shut off the gates to make the plastic flow. Not sure. Anyway, it'd be interesting to see if everyone else's kit is like that or if it's just mine. Um, again, we've got the same here. It does look like they've cut off the gates. Um, I've actually worked in injection moulding. I've never seen this before. Very, very unusual. It looks like they've made the plastic flow into this area that way rather than allowing it to go in. Maybe they're getting cold fronts. Cold fronts is when the plastic travels down the sprue and it comes together and it meets. And if it's been a long time, it doesn't fuse. It just sort of sticks together, which is why you often see Airfix clear parts have these lines in them. It's where the plastics come and met together. So, um, yeah, interesting. Now then, we'll turn over. We have got some ejector pin marks in the tarpaulin, but they're very, very light. They're going to sand out in seconds. Um, we've got some here which are extremely shallow in the bottom of the cargo bed. Um, but again, very, very shallow. I'm just wondering. Yeah, I mean, that's gone already. You can see, you can see just how shallow they are. Let's go to this one here. Just show you there close up. Other kit, kit manufacturers need to pay, take note. This is how to do an ejector pin mark. That one there we're looking at. Okay. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight strokes. And it's all but gone. Okay, so very good, very good, and the same here, yeah, so you can see this is what Vesda are giving us ejection pin marks that are so easy to work with, it's untrue, so thanks for that guys. Um, another crossbow there, a shovel, and as you can see the tarpaulin, I'll give you a close up on the detail on that cargo floor, which is quite nice. I'm not sure if that would have been wood or, or metal, and probably wood. The same one, it looks like it's some um, steel shuttering on the sides. But there's no ejector pin marks, it looks like, on the sides at all, which is a nice touch. Some very shallow ejector pin marks here on that subframe, but uh, nothing much to worry about. And again, we've got some on the inside of the tarpaulin there, but again, nothing much to worry about at all. If you're going to put the tarpaulin on, I don't think you'll see inside anyway. <clears throat> So that's for that first bag, and then we move on to the second bag. I'm sorry if you're getting bored, guys. It's going on a long time. There's a lot to talk about. This is um, pretty involved. We've got a smaller sprue here, and then here we've got um, these are our splash guards for the sides of the engine bay. Got some pedal detail there, some pipe work. Um, these are the corners of the cab by the look of it. We've got some grab handles there. These are the hinges for the um, for the main cab. And then we've got a radiator shroud, there's our cab roof hatch, air filter box there, more hinges, um, more detail here going around, it, air intakes or something, steering wheel there which is very nice. And then we've got some, these look like uh, supports for the radiator, for the um, mudguards there, we've got some other seat supports by the look of it, 
there's that mirror mounts, some hosing. It's just stunning. It's really, really nice and beautifully moulded, beautifully detailed. And here we've got the, um, that was actually the back side there. How unusual. Normally you get all the detail on one side, don't you? Like all the detail here and here and here and there. And then when you turn it over, you've got more and more detail here. But here's the, the, the ejector pin side. And we've got detail here on the ejector pin side and nothing on there. It's unusual to see. So we've got grab handles there, as I say, hosing. And then that's the inside of your splash guard. So when your cab is up, it really will look authentic. Perhaps thin the back edge down a bit. But um, yeah, that's part of your subframe for your cab as well. So again, as I say, if your cab's up, the detail is going to be astounding. It could be worth actually building this with the cab up in a maintenance um, diorama because th there's so much detail is going to be hidden underneath that cab if it's down. But yeah, I'll give you a close up on all this. So you can see the detail on that subframe there. Really, really nice. Really, really nice. And bear in mind, guys, this kit less than 30 quid. It's, uh, it's incredible. Air filter box detail there. Some more air intake, I think. Looks like these are our um, windscreen wiper and indicator stalks. You see even the cab hinges here look, uh, look quite stunning. And there's the other versions there. So yeah, very nice indeed. Now we're moving on to the engine sprue. Wow, that's quite heavy. Again, this Vesta plastic, I love it. So this is, um, there's some pretty stunning detail on here, guys. Quite stunning indeed. Um, so we've got wheel hubs there, we've got shock absorbers. Is that gonna be the fuel injector pump? I'm not sure. We've got our engine fan there, insides of the wheels with the brake detail. And then that's there's going to be the spare wheel there. Turbos there. So turbo, um, <clears throat> that's going to be the compressor. That's going to be the turbines there. So exhaust and intake. Um, we've got air tanks there. This looks like the front hubs. Looks like we may have a bit of a weak connection point on the front hub going onto the axle. But uh, hey ho, we'll look at that. Brass wire sorts a lot out. And then we've got some more detail parts here. And then we've got our gearbox end case or transfer box case, exhaust manifolds, filters there. Again, more air tank ends, axle. And then we've got the engine detail there, which is quite stunning. I'll show you that in a second. This is the top of the gear transmission there with the integral cross member. Intake manifold, um, cylinder heads there with the, um, looks like they've got separate actual cylinders, much like those Italian engines, I can't think what they're called now. Italian diesel engines and then we've got our belts there looks like steering tie rod sump uh, battery box some other details and bits there on the back side nothing really much to see there um, other than the mounts for the spare wheel got some detail on the back of these hoses and stuff but uh, yeah so I'll give you a close-up of all this just quickly go around the sprue very very nice detail indeed Lovely cylinder head detail. And we've got the valley there. There's the engine valley with my finger behind it. Top of the transmission. Intake manifold. Brake drums. Engine cooling fan. And then we've got our turbos there. You can see they're very beautifully moulded. Air tanks. Looks like the front uprights. And then we've got the um, transfer box or gearbox end casings, whatever they are. We've got the stunning engine and transmission detail there. Very, very nice indeed. Proper 2019 kit, this, hey? <clears throat> very nice. And here's our next but last sprue. This is actually the last sprue because we've got two identical ones, both the same. So, uh, so have a look at this one. Um, got some stunning wheel detail here. So we've got six wheels with the uh, split in the rim, which is a nice touch. We've got the mud flaps here, which, as I said, we have got the Kamaz on there. So that's really nice that they've actually, Kamaz have allowed them to use the, the logo. Um, you know, knowing the way uh, the Eastern European world works, they're probably, you know, really, really pleased that a kit manufacturer is making a model of their products. Unlike the Western world where we say, oh, we can we can make money out of you for doing this, like, you know, so 
it forces other companies to have to sort of you know put names on which don't really exist like um michelin and stuff and uh we've all seen the oshkosh with the osh the s's in oshkosh made into eights so um yeah it's a shame really i you know if i think if i uh if somebody wanted to make a, a model of me and call it Nigel Model Invention One, I think I'd be quite pleased. Um, why, why you'd make a model of me, I do not know. Um, it would use a lot of plastic. So we've got detail here. So we've got our brake actuators there. We've got our, these are our rear seat supports for the cargo bay. Um, cross members for the cargo bay. More bits and pieces of seats. It looks like a bit of damage on there, a bit of warpage. Um, more wheel rims. They're going to look really nice. Um, jerry cans. It's so unusual, they've got the jerry cans moulded in situ with the holders by the look of it. Um, and then we've got some tiny greeblies here, we've got some radius arms there. Uh, that looks like, um, what do you call them? Um, when you screw the centre in it tightens them up, I can't think of the word now, but you see what I mean, those things there. Um, it's always difficult, you do reviews, you're trying to think of so many things at the same time as you're trying to talk. And then you've got more cross member detail there. Really, really nice. Light detail there. And that looks like a bumperette. Yeah, so there's this, there's two of these sprues. So everything you see on here is doubled up. And then onto the back side, there's not really much detail at all, but it is again nice to see that's the exterior. Um, of the, the, the mud guard there and then the interior has got the same detail on it again with no with no ejector pin marks as well so this is stunning so you keep going like this you're going to have some of the um, you know the, the top class kits out there and if you keep your pricing point the same you're going to become untouchable this is just incredible um, I think this is probably the best 135th scale truck yet I've ever seen what I will say is I don't know how it's going to go together. This is the problem with inbox reviews. We can all look at the content. We can look at the detail, how crisp and clean the molding is, you know, and how beautiful and you get all these different greeblies and bits of pipe work and engine detail and that. If none of it fits, it's going to be a dog. So, you know, it's, it's, you've got to be, um, you've got to be mindful of the fact. And I've actually probably later today going to do a different type of review where I've actually built the model and then we're going to review it when it's just built. So um, that'll be a different kind of thing. You have to let me know if you like it. So yeah, lovely, lovely detail on there. I'll give you a close up of these wheel details and stuff. You can see really, really nice and crisp, very sharp. Again, axle detail there with the, the bolt detail around them. And uh, yeah, and here again, we've got the, the mug guard there with Kamaz on it. You can see there's the same there. And then when you turn them over, they actually look like a pressing that they really are or maybe they're plastic molding I'm not sure but um, yeah really really lovely and then we've got the same here same sprue again we've got two of those and we've got a bag actually look at the clear parts first so we've got clear parts well I've just noticed something else that I didn't notice before which is a very nice touch so we've got we got our string here, which is nothing to write home about. It's just a piece of string, but it is very, uh, very floppy and flexible, which is nice. Uh, so we've got our clear parts here. Um, yeah, this is going to be the letdown of the kit, I think. The windscreen. This is that soft Zvezda clear plastic. It's not at all brittle. It's very strange. Normally, clear parts are very brittle. You know, normally that would snap off if I did that, but. Um, now I'm not sure what we've got here, but I'll show you before I touch it, I'll just show you close up. You can see on there, there's like a, like something on it. Now I'm not sure if that is actually something on it or if it's molded in. Yeah, it's, um, it's molded in by the look of it. So we'll have to give them a bit of a clean and a polish or a dip in something. Um, we've got the same on the side windows there. And as for distortion, doesn't look too bad at all. So yeah, if, if this doesn't come out very nice, this could be a reason for doing it with the cab up. Because at least then this, this will be facing downwards and you won't see much of it. But um. 
it's a bit strange it does feel oily to, to be honest so I'll have to give it a wash and have a look but um yeah that's the only poor part of the kit I've seen so far I must be honest um, maybe it could be replaced with a sheet of acetone or something or acetate should I say we shall see so there's our clear parts and we've got our decals here which is obviously a very simple sheet there's not going to be much to it just stand up make sure you don't get the gloss you can see there some nice number plates and stuff Russian flag so there we go and then this I thought was a nice touch mirrors they've given us a sheet of mirror material so you can see there looking at my Apple iPhone see the reflection of the lens and you can see they're very very nice and, uh, and reflective so it's a bit of a shame about the clear parts but I'm sure with a dip in future or something they'll be absolutely fine um, I'm sure Revell will launch this kit within a few months now maybe if Revell mold it themselves which I doubt they will they'll use different plastic I've left that string out as well um, so tires this is our final part of the review so we've got our two four six seven tires and they've got a very nice tread pattern on them um, there's a very slight seam which appears to sand off quite easily yeah that's sanding off quite easily so they're actually solid they're not hollow um, and they have got letters on them KAMA 1260 it's got a directional arrow there and it's a 425 85 R21 so um, all the tire lettering on there as well which is very nice to see I must be honest and we've got the same on the other side so I have to make sure when you get them on get the directions correct you have your V your chevron pointing downwards going forwards so yeah very very nice indeed and they're molded on these little sprue things here and they are they're not a generic tire they're they're part of the kit 2019 so let's just show you up here close see if we can pick up that lettering for you there we go you can see if I start start at 12 o'clock we've got camera 1260 and a directional arrow we've got our sizes there we've also got the ribbing on the side wall and the tread pattern is very nice and as you can see I've sanded away the seam there and that's kind of come away something you can try is freezing them and then it'll sand off a bit easier I think but yeah very nice indeed so that's it we get seven of those so we obviously got six for the truck and one spare she only didn't give us one another spare but never mind us just being greedy so there we go guys um that is the Zvezda let's get the box lid again that is the Zvezda K5350 Mustang or the K5350 Mustang and that says Russian three axle truck there yeah <laughs> okay so thanks for watching if you've enjoyed this please give me a like and uh, and perhaps subscribe I do a lot of build videos and do a lot of um, reviews and stuff I've got another review coming up today and I'll, I think I'll do a, actually a couple of reviews today and um, yeah so give us a like subscribe if you have already subscribed thank you very much and if you want to um, donate to the channel feel free to do so uh, via PayPal or Patreon and I want to say a big thank you to all those that have already um, donated money to the channel it's all going into a big box and um, it's going to end up buying a new camera so I don't have to use this horrible iPhone anymore well, I've got nothing against iPhones I love them but it's not actually a really successful route to uh, YouTube videos and then once I've got the camera I'm going to look at some proper lighting and we're going to get a proper channel going here guys get something really good together so thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you all soon bye for now